run as a core, as a safe lane core, and they, they couldn't do anything against him. Like, he's zoned him out from range, it's, and we know Skyrath Mage can do that, but when you also give him levels and farm with early arcane boots, it gets even more dangerous. So, PR, let's see how they're going to go with their lanes now, because you got J4, so... Okay, where have we got? We got FNG actually playing to support Skyrath. I, I take it all back. Uh, we actually have a support Skyrath mage coming into this game. Yep. Core, I mean, any other team, I would have said, yeah, let's see a Skyrath mage go into the mid, and um, he's he's uh, great. I think he's a uh, pretty damn good mid against certain drafts. But since it's Power Rangers, they they, they got they got to run the core eventual spirit man. It's just the it's FNG loves it way though. too much. Moon moon back up. Oh, Whoa! okay. That's Lion. Lion doing the pause though. Oh, all right. Uh, moon just is double very checking fortunate. though. Look at the vision area. Yeah, he can see it. Yeah, he they, can see it. Like there, there's there's the claw. There's the claw that's out right there. But the funny thing is, the radiant side don't see him. Really? Yeah. Look at the, look at the visions. Is, actually, that do they? Be impossible. Actually, no. It is. It is. It is. They can see up to here. It's just because of the the shading. Yeah, they can actually see quite clearly up. Yeah. All right. So both heroes see each other. This means Moon turns around, and that means Seaside's gank is completely and least screwed. Uh, turn. Yeah, we go. Turn. Also, I don't think you should be going Hex uh, level 1 as Lion. At the very least, you, you should leave your abilities open um, just in case. Earth Spike is longer range than, than Hex. So if you're going for one of these level 1 kills, what happens if you're barely outside of range? Hex wouldn't do the deal that Earth Spike would. You know, I, I think he should have held on to his abilities. They may still catch Moon. Moon here. What are you doing here, man? Moon? I don't know. There's your Hex, and now Shikuchi up with the Chilling Touch. Uh, that should be Moon's death right now. Shikuchi's going to be on cooldown. He moves up, trying to cut he through the, the tree line. And he's up towards the Tier 1 tower with no secondary attack. And he hides inside while Bat's spot up on the top lane. Well done. I, I mean, that was silly of him to, to actually go, back go down again. forward, but he recovered it, I guess. So. The battle begins. Didn't give up the first blood. Well done. Um, so going back to the problems with Seaside. Seaside, um, they, they do have some early game. I think I'm, I was kind of overstating it when I said they have no early game whatsoever. The problem is they that when you go for push squads like this, you need to be able to ensure you win the laning phase. And um, I don't think they're going to get a whole lot of benefit because really, you look at Seaside's lineup now that they went for the full five, they should be angling totally towards late game and shouldn't be going for any pushing at all. Um, except for maybe a couple of tier one towers, but that's really the only benefit I think you're going to get out of the Pugna. Seems like the Pugna was more of a counterpick to the Skyrath Mage um, than anything else, but I, I don't feel Pugna is particularly strong in, in as just a counterpick. I think you should be trying to utilize him as a push squad. Uh, <laughs> J4. I didn't even think this was really ne necessary, considering like what Moon already did on top lane. But he decided to go in towards the Radiant Jungle as the Enigma. Just watching him come down here and do this. The creepy purple people are everywhere. Ah. Illusions plus Eidolons. It's an army. We can never have enough Enigma, man. Ah, but it's, it's just a very unusual thing to do, because now we can't rotate up towards the top lane easily and, and to help out up against the AA as well as the Lion. I think it's okay because he's going to very easily. It's questionable whether an Enigma, Nig Enigma as strong as he is as a jungler, is not a f um, that effective as a rotator, right? You would much rather have Chen or Enchantress if, if you wanted to be able to have Correct. a rotating jungler. Um, Enigma, though, it's questionable whether you would have an impact in that top lane and actually be able to win a fight. It's not questionable whatsoever whether his ganks will be successful in bottom or middle. You have a Drow Ranger and a Pugna. Even if it's level 1 Malphys, it doesn't really matter because both these heroes are so squishy. So, so squishy. Enigma catches them once with the Malphys and they're, they're done for. Yeah. So the Enigma is going to be able to, uh, to just shut down both sides of these lanes while still be able to uh, effectively jungle without worry. I wonder why J4 is just leaving one little creep behind. Haste on FNG. Uh, he may even just die for the courier right now. He could do that completely. Oh, the Gus pushing him back. J4! Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. He got the courier. Got the first one was still going to throw a ranger, but oh, over on that courier was actually it. nothing. So, uh, for some reason, it was a secondary wraith band that was being thrown out by that courier. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm really not sure worth it. I'm really no, not sure I don't worth it. Is. Uh, I, bottom lane, though, this will be worth it. Pugna, easy rotation coming in from the Skywrath Mage with already four napalm stacks, five napalm stacks oh, over on the Pugna. It's a guaranteed kill. Lion will also arrive, but this just means another concussive shot. 
Enigma also rotating in, but he rotated in on the different position. He came in a little bit too high then. Yeah, if he'd come in through the back of the tower, that, that should have been a secondary kill. Yeah, with, with the conversions oh, wow. actually like moving in this way, he, they would have tanked up the tower for him. Yeah, exactly. But So, movement back and forth. Um, this is smart, right? Power Rangers have a lost lane at top. Um, so it makes sense for the Skywrath Mage, who and is the squishier oh. of the two heroes at top, to try and make some rotations and again shut down the, the two solos, which are super easy to kill. One disable, even the long range to disable a concussive shot, is probably enough to, to ensure a, a quick kill. And that's why he's going to go to middle now and try and get a kill on that Drow Ranger. Unfortunately for Drow Ranger, even though she's not a boots hero, or even though she's not a bottle hero, and killing that courier um, is, is not that effective, in that regard, uh, you still kind of want the boots. Yeah. Just for the danger factor. She's got no movement speed now. Concussive shot will hit. And Lycan already sets up with the balls, with orbs, and uh, they actually almost go for the full block on the Dread Ranger. Gus will push him back, but they already get themselves the kill. AA did to arrive too with chilling touch bonus damage on him, but FNG knows how far he can push it. Oh, he stops tanking up the tower. Lion's gonna stump through the tree line to get the kill. He is locked in a corner, so again the Skyward throws away his life with this, but at the same time, Lycan, if only a little bit more mana, he'd have a guarantee kill on Lycan because he'd have, le have level 6. Uh, but meantime, Batrider kills Pugner on the bottom lane, the Hex will go off, but up towards the high ground, Lycan is, Lycan is safe. But they got another kill on the bottom lane, and that was actually a solo kill to the Pugner by the looks of it. Uh, to the Batrider by the looks of it. Uh, so, things are getting more and more curious. Draw Ranger actually went for the pushing build. Um, so he went for Radiance like lots of agility plus precision aura. I think that's for the Weaver more than anything else. I, I, it does help out the Weaver, but I don't think it's necessary for the Weaver to still be able to do strong. I think it would much rather have um, maxed out Frost Arrows at this point in time. It would have gotten them a kill on Chanchalo there as he was going uphill. Oh, um, Pugna is dead. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. It's, it's only going to take like the next creep wave to come down and then they'll initiate. Yeah, that's why I don't really enjoy Pugna being seen as just a counterpick hero because the the one reason he's so strong at push is one because he he's I like obviously nether blast is great for being able to push down towers quickly but he benefits from all his allies being around him constantly because he's so easy to pick up coming oh, in for moon hex is gonna start it off fng go concussive shot but it only hits on the weave which isn't the one to really help out with but he gets a hold the hold on the, the line at least so moon's up to get a kill before he goes down pugna dies again so uh we could have waited for that kill but we watched the two on the top instead yeah i mean it's 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 when, when you can watch top, which is actually maybe an interesting kill to happen, you're not sure what happens, whereas compared to bottom lane, which is like, well, we know the Pugna's dead. Yeah. He, he gets hit by Malphus, he's dead. Yeah. And they're just going to lose more here, too, because the Enigma's going to help to fo force out the tier 1 tower. And this is one of those things where, like, okay, Pugna keeps going down, he's got three points up on the blast, that's great, but he could never stay long enough near an enemy tower to di to inflict any kind of damage, where on the bottom lane, you get Cheshire Cat attack. mopping up the creep wave. You can actually drag this up and also farm up the neutrals at the same time, while Enigma has his entire creep wave, as well as his army of conversions, attacking onto the tower. This is exactly the positioning the PR wants to be in. And uh, they maybe get a better one. Ancient Apparition getting called out. He's sealed up and like it's triggered the old one. I think he actually needs to do that. One wolf up to the high ground would have been enough. Vision and then FNG could just solid that one. <laughs> oh my god. Cheshire Cat is level 8 by 6 minutes in. <laughs> and he has a blink dagger at 6 minutes in. Uh, J4 is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Lion as well as Pugna came down into Cryptify and Blast. Now J4, he does have Black Hole available, walks into the tree line and picks up the TP scroll, and he's just going to go back. As he goes up towards the top lane, there's no attack. fear. When you when you take out a tier 1 tower in the bottom lane, you force so many rotations, including the draw off the mid lane, you are so safe inside your own jungle right now. Yeah, look, I mean, they're going to pick up, jeez, Shotchlow's level 8 as well, because he's been a part of three different kills. When he picks up Roshan solo, he's just going to jump up massively. Uh, I do want to point out, just like Nahaz is uh, throwing in the stats, we do have a Weaver who's going for a much early game build. I do really Dyer enjoy this. I think more Weavers it. should be going for the medallion build when they're threatening the in the early to mid game. Um, if you don't want to be completely useless, I think um, a quick medallion plus some stat items is an excellent build for a Weaver to go for. We're seeing that uh, forcing potential from the Dread Ranger now. She hit level 6, and that was the reason why she rotated towards the bottom lane. It's a very simple, quick counter tower. And this is when you push, push line up, you can really come on. But at the same time, 
Mr. Vladimir's like and just takes out Roshan. So every bit of advantage which they just gained, they're also gonna lose two tw like like twofold. Yeah, they're, they're gonna lose they're gonna trade one for one, and that's probably the last tower, considering how poorly this leading phase is going, that's probably the last tower they'll be able to take like that. Every other uh, tower they will be fought for because oh, Tippy's coming in. Ready Denial attempted, but not going to happen. They have a conversion to the target. The moon, he's in trouble. Enigma, Sol Ring, he can't go the black hole right there. And he hits on two, but the gust from Dro will instantly silence because the damage he took by using the Sol Ring, too, it did not help the course. So they lose both Fiaz as well as Enigma. And like it's trying to force out the mid lane, he's got support rotating in with FNG as well as Batrider, and that's the Pugna. He goes for the kill, and uh, well, not the towel, but that's just Pugna dead. Too easy. Every two minutes, like clockwork, and the Pugna's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you been to do? The other way and to get alive is if it's, if, if it's like a five-man team. That's the only way that's gonna work. That, yeah, they they should be just trying to like. I like the fact they were formatting bottom. The problem is they chose support heroes that are not strong into level six. Like it's okay. Um, I don't give that much credit to a lion before level six. Ancient apparition is especially like you need to have ice blast. What's the, lion? the whole entire point of the hero? I, I'm really not sure about this lion. As Nagus, the immortal Lycan sitting on the front lines, he really doesn't care about anything, especially when he's got FNG with a level 6 nuke, or a level 1 nuke for his level 6. Go for it, FNG. He wants to blow up the Pugna so yeah, badly. He sees him, and now, boom, boom, and then Lycan on oh. the stun. He's going to hold him out for now with a follow-up hit. The Aegis Immortal will go down. He's just no ult to get himself out of this one, and there's little FNG can do. The Gus pushing him back. The tower actually gets denied by the lion, as well as the lion going down on top of it. This is uh, Power Rangers by getting a little bit overconfident, giving too much the way of Seaside. Yeah, I think Seaside are fairly lucky, um, fairly fortunate the fact that every single one of their four or five man rotations actually paid off in some sort of hero kill. Otherwise, they would be massively behind in experience. Um, they are still losing out in no, both experience and gold, though, kick. because that's just inevitable. When you four or five man like this in order to take towers and yet are still trading. Mark the ring close. Look at that Weaver. If he can get the seal. Ooh, FNG was trying to reach for it. Now the Batrider jumps in with no five by Moon. Able to get this on off over on the drone. Range of Flame Ray pushing it back in range as well. Midnight Pulse is actually the thing to get the kill at level one. And they're getting close for him towards our Blood Sunrise of a new world. And he will go down to Lasso dragging back. The partner end up. Then clockwork. Is it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Ten minutes. Fifth death. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, the bottom lane's gonna go down. Uh, tier two is gonna fall there. They already took the tier two in middle, even if it was denied. They're fine. Yeah, this this works out. I mean, this this you look at Power Rangers lineup. Even though it doesn't immediately speak to you of a push strat when they first picked it up, you're like, you saw the Lycan, but that was really good. Again? Again? Well, he's hit by AA Blast. He is dead. In order to kill off the towers, Lycan keeps throwing away his own life points. But he bought BTs on a Lycan, so I assume this 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 is the plan. It, the plan is to take out all out of towers, grab the next Roshan, and then go high ground. I assume that's the plan. Yeah, he he didn't have any other kind of boots. Maybe maybe he was just like so far ahead. It's one of those scenarios where you're like, I have regular boots, and then you go back to base, and you're like, I have 2,500 gold. I mean, do what's, I? I mean, I'm picking up boots of travel so early. I'm saving myself a lot of money on hey, on TP if, scrolls if I grab bots right now. If if Harney does it, it must be approved. Yeah. Well, the push is coming up middle lane again. This is going to be uh, Seaside trying to go for a five-man push. It's not going to be made easy by the fact that Firefly is going to mop up most of the creep wave and the range of some damage from FNG is also going to make life a little bit more difficult, especially when Weaver's in that close against Sealed and Line. He's there from the sidelines. He got Sealed up. There was no stun. The drone range gets picked off. The AA Blast flies over the top of the line, <laughs> but the Ice Blast itself doesn't connect. And now, TP out by AA. Flame Break back off. Cooldown already by Cheshire Cat. Three heroes on the sideline and coming up on 12-minute mark. West Pugna. Top I'm sure he'll die soon, man. I'm sure he's gonna die soon. Now, so when you look at Power Rangers lineup, Radiant's what I wanted to go is, is this is how you build a push lineup. 
the right. So you had the Vengeful Spirit and, and Skywrath Mage who give you a lot of early game presence, especially the Vengeful Spirit as a, uh, as a carry. You have strong synergy between the Lycan and the Enigma. They're going to win the laning phase and then take you down from there. Plus they have an issue. Oh, Moon, there's a jump the Drow Ranger. The second the Moon was initiated by the Drow, he went for the Kraken, but the Lion Stun and the AA Blast. Now to get the kill over on the Batrider. Miesel also loses his life, remember that's now negative armor, being a negative aura being given over towards the Seaside. Like him though, they need one more attack, the Drow Ranger arrow will be enough. Even with the negative, they've still got enough. That Drow Ranger had to buy back to be part of it, but the Tier 3 tower still went down, and the Tier 2 tower was denied just before the engagement began. Yeah, Power Rangers, uh, they're, they're definitely playing very, very sloppy. I mean, you compare this to Team Coast um, from last game, there is a big difference in these two playstyles, right? Which is Team Coast were just as far as ahead as Power Rangers were last game, or, or this game. But the difference was that they, well, first of all, they had a little bit more of a late game strat, but they also just very patiently played around that and didn't give any ground to the enemy team. Power Rangers are giving some ground. It's not enough to threaten them in any way. They should still be fine to be able to take the, the, the mid rags, but they are playing a bit sloppy and feeding away some kills that are probably unnecessary. Wow. Yep. Dagon. <laughs> FNG. Why not? <laughs> this, this hey, Pugna. Is, this is just the way. You they... counter me? No, no. I counter you. <laughs> this is this is the way. This is the way that uh, the PR want to play, man. Like they don't want to wait 25, 30 minutes to to go in for a safe high ground push. Even yeah, they if it's could. Like a best of one single elimination bracket. Mm -hmm. Screw that. Like this is just PR style. Be ag be aggressive. Be angry. Yeah, a truly, truly safe play would be waiting for the Necrobook 3 to be up on the Lycan first. Yeah, but and, and the BKB to be finished over on the Enigma, uh, and Batrider to have everything else yeah. he wants to. Yeah. Um, what, one thing that Power Rangers have that was sorely lacking in Seaside, what I wanted to say was Weaver needed to be an initiator, like some sort of battling hero, something like a Clockwork or a Batrider, something that picks an enemy off and gives you an advantage for the tower push. And and that was severely lacking if you wanted to go push for Seaside. Um, uh, that's why Power this, Rangers have this Batrider pickup, it's so good. This is not going to work for Seaside. They, five men or four men smoke up on the top lane looking for a kill, but Lycan's just going to take the bottom tower if they let this happen. Now Batrider in a Firefly sees them all, gets a lasso instantly over the line because he's the disabler, he's the controller. Now all of a sudden, the Weaver, follow up Black Hole right now, while the other three heroes TP out, but the Weaver's the primary goal here, and they got him. The stuns will be able to latch out, and now the question is, does Lycan have enough just to solo push this? No, the answer is no. Not against a Drone Ranger. Uh, uh, no! Shot slow. Running right back into it. Fortunately, Death Timer's are low enough that Seaside will still be able to defend. Yes, that's the upside. That's that's a really bad upside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the nice thing at all. What's actually the level difference? Hey, look at that too. You've, you've got eleven weaver. That's nice. But then you got nine, nine, eight, eight over on Seaside compared to the 12, 11, 11, 11, 10. Yeah, you look at the net worth. Top five in the board are all Power Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> life. Well, you'd expect that too. Like Power Rangers are playing Dota, where it's like. It's, it's understanding your own sacrifices. You lose heroes here, you lose heroes there. What do we gain in return? Well, we've only lost two of our towers. We've taken every single outer tower of Seaside plus a tier three tower up on the high ground. And that injection of money has allowed our like and finally finish level one Necro book, yay. Uh, but also buy up VT, so the split pushing is even stronger. The Enigma basically has his BKB now. The Batrider got so filthy, you were just not funny because he's got Blink Dagger 4 stuff and it's getting very close to his own BKB and we're not even 20 minutes into the game. We're actually 16 minutes into the game at that one. And then you've got FNG, a level 2 ultimate from him with RK Boots and a Dagon. His burst damage is already very, very scary. It's even worse for Seaside now. Uh, seeing Moon missing on the stun, however. But that also reveals the fact the Sentry Ward is there, especially when they start attacking on the Lycan Wolves. Which is stalking them. Skyrath is going to destroy himself if the Pugna ends up getting off the the uh, Nether ward. ward. <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's been shown that uh, uh, Pugna just can't seem to get it off in time. He just always gets silenced first, and now he can actually be bursted down from range before he gets off the Nether Ward. If, <laughs> if he just simply like hits the slow, immediately drops the flare and dagons him, there's a good chance he dies before he can do anything.
<laughs> I'm loving this approach right now, the Drone Ranger. So do I try and go for Mask of Madness? No, I'm going to die too quickly because they'll come in too close. Somewhere. So how do I deal with this? I get two Wraith Bands, I get myself a Yasha, and now I'll build into my BKB. Just rack up the Adji and hope there's enough of a, of a buff up. Uh, FNG as well as Cheshire Cat were also doing a bit of deboarding. That's that new gem which is over on Batrider. Mm -hmm. So now there's no even safety for sh inside the Shikuchi. It's only the time lapse which is going to save the Weaver. And there's like, there's not a lot of time to actually do that. When you're walking around with like 1100 life points when you have your uh, strength threads on, that's not a hell of a lot to work with. And now we have a second Rochan. 18 minutes into the game. They trigger the Howl with the four points up for the Vengeance or a two. It's just too easy to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this build for Drow Ranger is great early game. I, I, I think this is a great build to go for when you're trying to push down early towers because it gives you a great amount of stats. If you have a large amount of range heroes, the extra agility is going to pay off with the precision or being maxed out. Um, and in general, just makes Drow Ranger a bit more of a battling hero much early on. The problem is that, unfortunately, Seaside are not controlling the map. They're not pushing down these towers, and that means you're actually investing. Uh, you're essentially losing 240 gold for that extra wave band you bought. You're um, not really going to be getting any late game items anytime soon. TP's coming top. Why will they get the, hit, hit the tower? The seal's gonna be there. The nation don't even fallen. care about the tower. But they know the vision over on the Weaver, apart from the fact they know where the orb is running. He time lapses! All of the damage back up towards safety. And both Lion as well as Weaver will escape from this one. He was so lucky. How low on life was he at that point? <laughs> very, very low. Unfortunately, he, the Ogre Club is truly what saved him there. <laughs> He's, he's going for that early stats that I was talking about. He went for the Ring of Aquila, has a medallion, uh, made sure to get a magic wand and treads. Like, no brown boots for this Weaver. He needs the extra bit of stats from treads. And then he's going straight for an Ogre Club, or straight for a DKB now. Yeah, very, very wise. However, then again, you've still got Enigma Black Hole as well as Batrider Lasso. So they do have enough to control him outside of just the VS who also can swap through the BKB. So technically, what are you evading with this BKB? Sky Wrath as well as the Magic Missile. Yeah, you're, well, you're dealing with the silence of the Sky Wrath Mage, which is good versus Weaver. Um, obviously Magic Missile, but he's still probably going to be gone on by the Batrider uh, Lasso. But if you still pop the BKB before you get caught by that Lasso, there's a good chance you survive long enough to get off your time lapse, unless you're being drugged into a black hole. Yeah. Which, in which case, two ultimates were used for one hero. It's not that bad. Oh, looks like PR's now going to force the issue on high ground. With no tier 3 tower to protect out this mid this mid racks, they can attack it directly, including with Lycan Wolves. So uh, summon them up, and in they come. Moon's focusing on the range racks, and there's your last super grab. And they've already got the partner, and they're going in even deeper. Aoli will hit quite nicely over on the Lycan, but the following up damage just isn't there, especially when Skyrad does that to the Weaver. No, not even time to use the time lapse animation. The Dagon, as well as that Mystic Flare, just evaporated it. And VS now swapping into Lime. Seals him up quickly. Lime will buy back. And the army is still pushing him from PR. We will also do the same. Now, they don't have all these ultimates back up and running again. But they've almost got the melee rack. Throw Ranger, nice gust, sizing up three. Force up away, and now you're black hole. It calls the Weaver as well as the Drone, as well as the Lion. Flame Ring actually bouncing it back out of the Lion. Low on life, he'll go down. Weaver unable to actually time that down. This one, Moon finally gets the plug off him, and he will die the Drone Ranger. But we've got so many diebacks right now. There's just no more joy to be had from Seaside. PR taking mid. Ranks. They still have all five heroes up and running. They will inflict more damage on the base of Seaside. Yeah, Seaside went for a really complex strategy uh, in their defense of the base. It's um, something that is only happens against some of these early push lineups. And uh, the strategy is called uh, throwing heroes at them. It's just you, you just you just have low Radiant death timers, legit strategy. You have low Radiant death timers and, and, uh, and buybacks that don't cost very much gold, and you just throw as many heroes at the enemy and hope they actually back off. Unfortunately, ten versus five did not actually go Seaside's way. Just not be able to I, I would like to think of like a more complicated name for this kind of strategy beyond uh, throwing body time. The sacrificial falling. lamb. That could be. Anyway. I mean, there, there's a similar strategy for the mid game, which is called the run and dump strat, where you just run at the enemy. But 
Oh, we call that one the forest gum. <laughs> A little bit of trouble for you. <laughs> 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 they two racks. They could end the game. Uh, <laughs> but they, uh, they just, you could do this, Seaside. <laughs> they, they just, PR decided to not not fully dive into CR, Seaside's fountain, but they came to do shopping, and Seaside were able to capitalize on that moment. <laughs> now, did they, okay, they didn't actually get the, yeah, they got the gem. They got the gem over on the river range. Now attack. begins the longest, hardest victory of Seaside's <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, two man. racks down by 22 <laughs> minutes. Thrown exposed, left with 1500 health. Up against two level three necro books, a desolator over on a VS as well. The second necro book uh, that level three was picked up by the Enigma inside the base. And now a rod of Owie over on Skywrath Mage 2. Unless Seaside have some like top secret tomes from the Dark Ages, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to pull this out. I just like. Power Rangers <sighs> sieging the castle. Seaside, there's no way they can they can deal with this. So, I, valiant effort, I, I suppose, of them buying back and defending their throne. But. We have a five minutes, <laughs> Mark. This is go Kadesh. for the throne. Uh, look at look at the line. It is. It's just straight in through the bottom, into the t into the throne. Kill whoever you find in your path. Uh, why did Cheshire? What? Why did his smoke break? Did he attack something? Uh, he must probably. have attacked something. Hey, did he attack the rune? No, there was no rune. Ah, either way, Chechik Cat Smoke is now broken. Uh, I don't know why. No, don't worry about it. I was just amusing myself. Lion. Lion. Oh, Lion. <laughs> Dead straight away. Lasu, going to drag back the internet apparition. This means PR took all that regeneration they're searching for. And they just go in for the GG push. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, 28 to 15. Final score. And that's going to be it for the I-League qualifiers. For Cap, there's more action coming up. Join the community. Go to joindata.com. You can follow all the details and everything, too. Uh, we're going to have another team playing up in two days' time, which I know a lot of people will be looking for. Team Tinker. Uh, there's been assurances from PyCat that is only just for I-League. But then again, we hear a lot of this kind of stuff to cover face until teams are properly announced. But either way, uh, 